Joining me now, California Congressman Ami Berra, a Democratic member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He is also a physician. Welcome back, sir, to the broadcast. I'm glad to see you. I'm curious what you make of that reporting on Trump's DOJ secretly seizing phone records of House Democratic lawmakers. Can you recall another similar event like this? I can't. And hmm. Alex, thanks for having me on. I think it's outrageous. I mean, it is um, another exercise in abuse of power by the Trump administration. I agree with Congressman Schiff that there's no way this investigation could have taken place without Attorney General Sessions or Attorney General Barr knowing it. And if it did, that is another breach um, that they, they would be doing an independent investigation like this. So I'm glad that the Department of Justice Inspector General is going to take a look in this. I hope the Senate Judiciary Committee takes a look at what was going on and you know, we get to the bottom of this. You know, and for what for what end game here? I mean, is this the kind of thing that needs to be undertaken, this investigation with the utmost transparency in order to restore Americans' faith, faith in a unbiased, uh, non-political, non-partisan Justice Department? It absolutely is. And this may just be the tip of the iceberg. I mean, we've seen through the four years of the Trump administration that abuse of power that using the Justice Department as his own personal lawyer Let's get to the bottom of this. We have to pass laws and, and legislation to better keep the Justice Department as a neutral arbiter of the law, because that's historically what it's been, and that is how um, President Biden set this department up. When it comes to a January 6th commission, you heard Speaker Pelosi saying she's going to see what happens in the Senate tomorrow. Watch that very closely. It'll help with her decision as to whether or not to form a select committee. How do you see the best way going forward to figure out and get to the bottom once and for all on the details as best we can in that terrible, terrible day? I mean, I certainly hope the Senate comes together and gets the 60 votes necessary to set up an independent commission. You know, Speaker Pelosi and Democratic leadership gave um, Kevin McCarthy everything that they were asking for, and yet they still cannot support this deal. I think it's better to take the politics out of this um, get you know well-respected individuals in both parties, Democrats and Republicans, um, that are not in Congress, to get to the bottom of this and get to the truth of what happened on January, January yeah, 6th. But, but do you think there should be yet another vote taken? Do you think that any lessons have been learned, that anybody will have changed their prior vote when they voted it down? Well, I would hope a lot of the Senate Republicans are embarrassed about that vote and heard from their constituents back home and others. Hmm. If they can't get the 60 votes, then I think it does fall upon us as the House Democrats to, to lead an investigation, whether that's through a select committee with members of Congress or through setting up an independent commission to take a look at this. Okay, well, we'll see if that comes to pass. Let's take a look right now at the president overseas, which we've been doing all the last weekend or so. Um, we have watched the president meet with world leaker, leaders rather at the G7 this weekend. Uh, his message, America is back. Do you feel it is resonating on the world stage? You know, I really do. And again, it's in contrast to the four years of the Trump administration and the unpredictability of President Trump. I think Joe Biden had a great summit here. Um, I, if you listen to Emmanuel Macron's comments, he said that President Macron said America's back. And I think President Biden can walk away looking at this as a success. Yeah. Uh, and putting on your hat as well as a lawmaker, that of a physician, I'm curious what you feel about the G7 countries having agreed to provide 870 million COVID-19 doses over the next year to countries in need. How critical is that in ending the global pandemic and thereby protecting Americans as well? And do you think it's enough? You know, it's a starting point. I think it's a hugely important announcement, this global vaccine diplomacy, global health leadership from the United States and the G7 nations is incredibly important. No, we've got to get to eight, nine billion doses of vaccine. So this is a starting point. You know, you saw in the, the summit with President Moon from South Korea, you know, a decision to, to start working together to try to tap into South Korean manufacturing capacity. And, you know, I think we'll have to ramp up global manufacturing capacity to get to that eight to nine billion doses. Okay. California Congressman Ami Berra, thank you so much. A little briefer than I had hoped. We had a bunch of live events to cover today. I'll